Hey y'all, welcome to Sweet Tan Butterflies. Today we are working on a not so spooky Halloween um, collaboration. There are several um, very crafty individuals in this playlist. So I invite you to check the description box and um, I will share the playlist link and each of the hosts um, channel links in the description box. Be sure to go over and, and show everybody some love. And oh, what else was I? Oh, I've got three projects for you today. So I will um, get into that in a minute. I'm coming up on my birthday on October 16th and I am trying to get to a thousand subscribers. So I'm going to do a giveaway when I hit that thousand uh, subscribers. I would love to hit um, the thousand subscribers um, by my birthday. I have less than half to go. Um, I'm not quite sure. I didn't look before I started recording to see where I was at already. Um, I think I had 550 something not sure so less than uh half to go so that should be a very doable go goal so stay tuned uh toward the end of the playlist and i'll give information on the giveaway um i just want to say thank you to all of you who continue to watch my videos support my channel show me um show me all the love it means it means the world to me and um for those of you that are coming over from the playlist i invite you to subscribe like comment share um those of you that have been watching for a while but but may not have subscribed yet what are you waiting for if you're watching the content anyway hit that subscribe button hit the little notification bell so that you can be informed every time I upload upload new content. I guess it would help if I could talk today, right? Anyway, so let's get crafting. Okay, so we, this is, like I said before, this is the not so scary Halloween challenge. Our hosts are Chris's Crafty Life and Craftastic DIYs. And everything before all of this, I kept saying not so spooky Halloween. It's the not so scary Halloween. Anyway, so I'm, um, the first project I have here, um, I am using two different canvases um one is a framed canvas as you see there one is a flat canvas and i'm going to be doing a busted canvas so i was showing you there where um i was going to put each image on each of these canvases so what i did was i took and um put some mod podge down pardon me Put some Mod Podge down on the canvases and um, decoupaged those papers on there on, you know, in each spot where I was going to do them. Now I'm taking and I'm cutting a hole in the middle and cutting slits in it. So I just basically, and you can do these slits, um, in any fashion it doesn't have to be symmetrical i've seen somebody uh go in and and really do some jagged <laughs> um abstract slits in there but what i did was i took and from the middle i took to each side and each end and then now i have room to get my scissors in there and i'm gonna get and cut uh back to the frame where my scissors touch the the frame in there um, so now that I've got them all cut, I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to use it to kind of roll 
those um, pieces back as you see here um, one of the things uh, you want to make sure you you do um, is when you're putting this and your flat canvas with the other uh, print on it when you're putting them together make sure to check your orientation um, and make sure both of them are, are upright the way they're supposed to be um, I did not make the mistake of putting one upside down but I have done so in the past so just a little reminder to check the orientation of um, what's supposed to be the top of each of them make sure that you've got them aligned so now that I've got those rolled back I'm going to take a little bit of um, a little dab of hot glue on each of these um, I would suggest because I did have some issues with some of them popping loose and I think it's because I um, when I did the Mod Podge I did do a top coat of the Mod Podge and for some reason it's not wanting to stick real well to the Mod Podge so what I would suggest doing is um, maybe putting a little dab of hot glue for instant hold and a little dab of um, like the super glue or whatever and then uh, hold it down till the hot glue sits and it should hold it long enough for the um, super glue to set so I had stopped at Dollar General on my way home before I started this project and happened to see these lights and I was like oh how cute they're little purple bat lights gotta have them so um, I decided to incorporate those in this busted canvas I might go back in um, and take a few of the bats off the string because it kind of looks too cluttered in there for me let me know after after you see the finished project uh, project let me know what you think I think um, I need to remove some of them and just have the lights in certain areas so give me your opinion in the uh, comments so that I can uh, yeah help me make up my mind <laughs> sometimes us crafters are not great at making up our minds and as you can see I'm just taking um, and kind of positioning them and then just putting a dab of hot glue to kind of try to hold them in place because they'll be fine once I put the flat canvas on the back of it but I definitely needed to have something to hold it you know somewhat in place um, until I got that on there otherwise they would have just been all over the place <laughs> um, the, the little LED wired strings um, they're great but sometimes they can be unruly they don't necessarily always want to stay where you put them um, so just a note and I look forward to hearing your opinion your opinions in the, the comments as to whether I need to remove some of those bats off of there but anyway um, I just want to give a big thanks to all of you that um, continue to watch my content and follow my channel and engage with my channel it means the world to me um, I try to keep up on commenting or replying to your comments um, sometimes though depending on how many collaborations I've got going on and what's going on with work and all of that because I do have a full-time job too sometimes it might take me a day or so to reply back but I will reply back to you and for all of you that are new um, I invite you to like subscribe comment share um, every little bit helps uh, my channel grow I also invite you all to follow us on our social medias uh, we're on Facebook 
Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, and we have our own little um, craft group page on our website. I'll leave all those links in the description box. And don't forget, I'll have the, um, the playlist link and the link for the host's channels um, from the collaboration in the description box as well. <clears throat> Pardon me. I've got allergy season going on here. I think I've almost got the bats, the lights and stuff in place. I thought I cut some of this out, but I didn't. Sorry, guys. Anyway, um, I can't believe it. I'm out of words. <laughs> if you'd have told my mother when I was a child that I would ever run out of words, she would have told you you were crazy. <laughs> it used to be a, a running thing. Anytime we got in the car to go somewhere or whatever, She'd be like, I bet you can't be quiet for five minutes. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> but that's okay. Sometimes not having a bunch to say comes in handy, too. Because there are times that my mouth will definitely get me in trouble. But anyway, so I took and lined those up. And I started off with two of the corners, tacked down the other two corners, and then I'm going in the seam there with hot glue and holding it till it sets. Um, and now I'm taking and putting a little bit, just a little bit of Spanish moss down in there. Sometimes that stuff gets unruly too. Um, and a little of it goes a long way sometimes, depending on the look and the um, aesthetic you're going for. Um, less is more sometimes with Spanish moss. I'm just hot gluing it down in there. Uh, and that, the Spanish moss and the skeletons I'm about to add kind of cover up two of those, those bats that are in there. But the, you can still see the glow from the light. So that's kind of cool. Anyway, I'm taking and I'm putting three little skulls in the bottom. And I didn't think about it until now that, you know, I don't know. I hope that this project still kind of falls under the not so scary. Uh, I didn't even think about it. It was just an idea I had in my head and I just went with it. Um, I hope it qualifies as not so scary because it's not that scary, right? I guess it depends on who you are. Everybody has their own um, ideas and opinions on what is creepy, scary, fun, cute, you know, that kind of thing. So hopefully it still qualifies as not so scary. So now that I've got those in there, um, I go in and I don't know if I show it or not. I don't think I do. Um, I went in at some point and painted the eyes, the nose, and just kind of dry brushed over the mouth of this, uh, skeletons. You can see there that, um, I guess I cut that out. Um, I've been trying to not show me painting so much in my videos. Um, I didn't actually mean to cut out painting those because it was just little, you know, things. But it's, it's not difficult to get in there with a small brush and just kind of add some, you know, color in there. So when you put these two canvases together, there is still, because of the folds on the corners of um, of the framed canvas, <laughs> it causes a little bit of a gap in there. 
Oh, pardon me. It causes a little bit of a gap in there. Um, so I'm taking some jute twine. I originally was going to, and I painted around the, um, around the edge of these canvases with, um, a lavender, I think it's lavender sachet, or it might be a lilac mist. I don't know. Anyway, a light purple. My original plan was to take and put um, ribbon around there. I was going to cut it down and, and put it around. And I know I bought some. Some Halloween ribbon. I have no idea where I put it. I could not find it for the life of me. At least not at this point when I was doing this. It dawned on me this morning on my way to work where I put the ribbon, but it's too late now. I've already done this. Um, but I took and put some jute twine in there around to kind of finish off, so to speak, um, where that gap is. So, and then I also put it around the, um, I also put it around the top um, canvas there. Sorry, I got thrown off my, my watch is telling me it didn't understand that. I don't know why it suddenly decided. It's, it's across the room on the charger, and I did not say the G word to activate it, so I don't know what it's doing. It's got a mind of its own. Uh, it just totally threw me off. I'm like, who's talking? <laughs> Have you ever had one of those moments where your devices do something and you hear talking and you're like, where's that coming from? Anyway. Yeah. If it weren't for our devices, I don't know. Some days I think I'd lose my sanity without them and some days I think I'd be more sane with without them just depends on the day that's going and what's going on definitely uh certain work days i'd probably have more sanity without it i work in a family law office and we do a lot of um you know when we're trying to communicate with one another because the attorneys are in court or sometimes working from home or whatever. So we've got like a office group chat. And there are some days that I just want to throw my, my phone across the room because it go, <laughs> they go crazy in there. Rapid firing with, hey, can you do? Hey, I need this done. Hey, I need this filed. I need this drafted. That kind of thing. Um, that's the, the life in a law office though. And now my little fur ball, little kitten, is uh, being a kitten, getting into stuff. So anyway, uh, um, speaking of getting into stuff, I had to sit there for probably about two minutes untangling this uh, jute twine because the kitten got a hold of it. It was nice and neatly rolled, and the kitten got a hold of it. And had it all tangled in knots. So I had to untangle it before I could finish. <laughs> but he's cute. And he's cuddly when he's not being mischievous. mischievous. So. You know. You gotta. When you, when you have little. Uh newbie animals, baby animals in the house. It's a learning process. It's like having a toddler. I can't go to the bathroom alone. I can't do anything alone. The kitten follows me around like a puppy. <laughs> when he's not getting into trouble. He's not following me. He's attacking my feet when I walk by. So I took and attached the battery box um, to the back and if you do this make sure that when you um, glue it to the back 
that you leave the um the section where it's slot you know where you can open it to change the batteries make sure that that's on the top so that you can get to it easily to change the batteries and then i just glued a jenga block on the back to help it stand help stabilize it a little bit better now you don't have to make it where it stands you can um, either put jute twine on the back for a hanger or one of the little sawtooth hangers um, whatever whatever works best for you so this is all just for inspiration all right so with this one I took um, I had a old syrup bottle um, that I cleaned out and the girls um, at the office, one of the attorneys and the other paralegal, both are, they love Halloween. That's one of their favorite holidays. And um, they had seen where I'd showed them the, the video of where I had done the um, color changing potion bottles for one of my projects. And they're like, oh, I want a potion bottle. So I decided that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make, I only got one made so far. I did not get a big enough bottle of alcohol to do two of them. <clears throat> and I do believe I have a second bottle like this. So anyway, you take and you, you fill it up, um, but you have to make sure you leave some space. So I only filled it up to the bottom of the um, neck of the bottle. Um, you want to make sure that you leave some space in there so that you can shake it. So I filled it up with alcohol. I added some red food coloring. Um, I believe it has to be the liquid food coloring, which I have a hard time finding anymore. Does anybody else have a hard time finding the liquid? All I ever see anymore is the gel food coloring. And I don't like the gel. I like the liquids. Even when I'm baking or whatever, I like the liquid ones better. I don't like the gels. But anyway, um, so you fill it up with alcohol. You put your col food coloring in for whatever color. Um, you kind of have to plan a ahead a little bit on these because you're doing a color changing. So you want to make sure that... Um, you want to make sure that that whatever food coloring you use and mica powder that you use is not going to give you like this funky ugly brown or something like that so just kind of plan it out ahead of time what color you want you know when you're when you shake it so my favorite color is purple um and the attorney that this one's going to her favorite color is blue um, so I decided I was going to go with the, the purple mixture. So I put red food coloring in there, put blue mica powder in there. And here I'm just trying to get, there was still a little bit of, um, yuck from the label on there. And then I went into Canva and created a label for it. And I didn't want to waste a whole sheet of sticker paper for one label, one or two labels. So I just printed it on regular paper and I'm going to decoupage it on the bottle. Sometimes that's easier than, um, than printing out stickers because, well, you know, <laughs> the sticker, the sticker paper is not, it's not god awful expensive, but you know, the printer paper's cheaper. And the scraps of the printer paper I can just turn around and use for taking notes on and stuff. It doesn't go to waste. So, and then, of course, I thought I had it on there straight. And it's just a little off kilter. Um, but then again, it would fit in just fine with our office, you know, and the person who's receiving it. Because more days than not we seem to be off kilter a little bit so it fits it works but anyway i just um 
deco I put some Mod Podge underneath and then I'm putting Mod Podge um, to seal it down as well. Anytime I'm dealing with, you know, a, a bottle or something like that that could get wet at any point, I like to seal it with the, the mod, uh, top coat of Mod Podge so that, um, so that it doesn't ruin the paper if water gets on it. And here I'm just taking, because I got a little bit too uh, heavy-handed, or, well, messy-handed with the Mod Podge, so I didn't want to paint the whole bottle with it, because I didn't want the, um, I didn't want the Mod Podge to alter the effect of the color change, because when you use, like, the, I was using matte Mod Podge, so it would have given the, the bottle a frosted look, which I think would have interfered a little bit. Um, I took and did hot glue on the top and just let it kind of drip down where it looked like wax. And then I painted it black. And here I'm trying to kind of show you it hasn't totally settled yet, but you can see in the front where it's red and you can see where the mica settled here. And then you just shake it up. <clears throat> and I didn't shake it a lot. But you shake it up and you get like a purpley swirl uh, color in there. And I... Um... I think I show... I think I have a video where I have done a potion crate. A witch's potion crate last year. That has four small bottles in there that I did the color changing stuff on. If you want to, um, I'll try to remember to put the link to that video in the description box so that you can kind of go see what different things you can, you know, different color combinations that you can come up with. All right. So DIY number three, real quick and simple. I took one of those planks, um, from the Dollar Tree. They come six in a pack. Uh, I think they're 4 by 4 or 4.5 by 4.5. <laughs> I painted it um, black. Now, I watered down the paint and did it more like a stain than a solid coat of paint. And here I'm taking and playing with my chalk paste again. I took the light purple chalk paste that I've got and I'm just scraping it across there um the chalk paste stuff is really it's really easy and i mean you can you can come up with some really neat um neat designs with it and stuff um my last or two videos ago i think i did a pumpkin um where i put dabs of different colors on there and then scraped across so it gave a blended color effect that was really neat and here you have the finished uh, product you can take in put a Jenga block on the back of that stand it up use it for a tiered tray so when I hit a thousand subscribers I'm doing a giveaway of some craft supplies that I had been gifted this whole shed, I had my pick of anything that was in there. So I'm going to share that wealth with y'all when I hit a thousand subscribers. So stay tuned. I'm aiming for trying to get it by my birthday, which is October 16th. So please subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Um, help, help a girl get where she wants, where she's going. <clears throat> anyway, and here I'm just kind of, I just cut out uh, where I was showing those and put them in here for the final reveal. Each of the, um, the things, the products. I like these potion bottles. They're kind of neat. <laughs> Can you tell? I was, I left that one on there the most. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and have a great day.